The malware threat landscape is ever-evolving, with each era bringing a new variety of adversaries to defend against. Viruses in the early days were typically pranks, or simply for the purpose of causing as much destruction as possible. This changed beginning in the 2000s, and no virus of the era was as infamous as the Configur worm. Configur, also known as Downadup, Downup, and Keto, was a computer worm that emerged in late 2008. Configur exploited a critical vulnerability in Windows 2000, XP, Vista, Windows Server, and the beta version of Windows 7. This vulnerability, given the catchy name of MS-08-067, allowed attackers to remotely execute arbitrary code on a victim's computer. Configur would send a malicious request to the target computer, not even requiring any input from the user on operating systems below Vista. Considering Windows XP, which was completely vulnerable, made up about 75% of all computers at the time, this was a pretty big deal. Configure actually wasn't the first worm to exploit this particular vulnerability, there was another worm before it called Gimiv. It tried to use the exploit to steal passwords, but because of some errors in its code, it couldn't send the information back to the attackers. Gimiv cropped up just a few months before Configure, so Microsoft was able to patch the exploit before Configure was released into the wild. This was before Windows Update as we know it, built into the operating system and can automatically download and install system updates. Before Vista, you had to manually go to Microsoft's website for Windows updates and install it yourself. To top it off, you had to use everyone's favorite browser, Internet Explorer, to do it. To be fair, they did have a basic version of the automatic update system we have now, but it didn't discriminate between normal updates and critical updates like nowadays. This service was notorious on XP for popping up every 10 minutes demanding the user update. It would also run on startup and could completely use up all of a computer's CPU for hours, making those computers effectively unusable for the duration. It's for these reasons many people turned off automatic updates, which was very easy to do on XP. Vista gets a lot of criticism, but you do have to hand it to them for improving security. UAC, auto-updates, Windows Defender, all great stuff for the average user. So back to Configure, what did it actually do? This is where Configure gets a little weird, and viewers who are familiar with it probably know where I'm going with this. Configure didn't really do anything, at least not from the perspective of a normal user. But that isn't true, it had a lot of functionality, probably more than most other viruses or worms ever had. Configure had five variants in total. Configure A was the first, followed by B, C, D, and E. A was the most basic. It would scan the entire IPv4 range to find computers with open ports vulnerable to the exploit. This was later scaled down to primarily scanning IP addresses on the local network. This is part of the reason why Configure was noticed basically instantly. It was a pretty noisy worm when it first started. You're not supposed to be here. Configure mainly spread in corporate networks, and to avoid being stopped by firewalls, it would directly download and install itself from an already infected computer within the network, rather than needing to make an external request to a server. After it had successfully infiltrated a local network, it would again try to scan the entire IPv4 range, but this time it would catch less suspicion, since it would use an already established organization as a base of operations. There were a few IP ranges it wouldn't touch, mainly those of cybersecurity companies, internet service providers and registrars, as well as Microsoft. It would also deny any requests coming from those ranges. Once inside a network, Configur would attempt to gain access to administrator accounts. It had a fairly extensive list of common weak passwords which it would run through, which proved surprisingly successful in many cases. It could also identify which administrator accounts had the most privileges and would prioritize targeting those over less senior accounts. But over the internet and networks wasn't the only way it spread. Starting with Configure B, it would also spread itself to any removable media attached to the computer. It had a few tricks to get users to allow it to spread using this method. If the computer had auto-run enabled, Configure would run some code that would install itself to the computer. If auto-run was disabled, it would instead use some very clever social engineering. It would present an option labeled Open Folder to View Files with whatever the default icon for a folder was on the machine it was inserted into. This would not show the files, instead it was a disguised installer for Configure. It would also attempt to delete Windows Defender's registry keys to minimize chances of detection. Later updates to the worm would also have it delete the files for third-party antiviruses. Let's go over how it would seek to evade detection, since it had some really smart and unique methods. 
One of the simplest, the worm would attach itself to the SVC host.exe service, so it couldn't be easily found in Task Manager. Later variants would also expand this to other Windows services, like explorer.exe. It would also disable Windows Update on Vista, preventing Microsoft from an easy solution of an update that could remove Configur. To block any removal tools or antiviruses from being downloaded, it would check any DNS requests made by the computer against a list of security products and companies and not allow the computer to access the site if there's a match. This backfired slightly, as it made it easy to check if you were infected. There was a Configur eye chart made, which would load images from a bunch of different sites, including sites of security companies, and could be used to tell if you were infected and by what variant. Configure also made itself hard to analyze with a variety of means. It could detect if it was inside a virtual machine and become dormant. It would also kill a few processes and tools, such as Wireshark and Process Monitor, to make analysis more difficult. It would also kill any process that had config in the title. Windows error reporting would be disabled in later variants, after Microsoft talked about how it was a crucial tool they were using to track and monitor Configure. Configur really entrenched itself on computers, and took extensive effort to make removal challenging. Configur deleted system restore points, as well as removing the option to boot the computer into safe mode. It would set the ownership of its DLL files to system, so even a user with administrator privileges couldn't delete the files. I mentioned earlier that Configur didn't need central servers to spread, but it did need them for receiving instructions from the gang behind Configur and updating to new variants. The worm contained a basic algorithm for connecting to randomly generated domain names based on the time and date. This algorithm was eventually reverse engineered, and all the possible domains were able to be registered by security researchers, locking the group running Configur out. The Configur group carefully kept up with security researchers, and would continuously adapt. For example, the Configur gang was very concerned about those central servers being hijacked and used to distribute removal tools, rather than the worm. They encrypted the payload with a bunch of different algorithms, including MD6, a brand new encryption algorithm at the time. A weakness in an early version of MD6 was announced a few months after Configure began spreading, and the worm was quickly patched to remove the vulnerability. F-Secure, a security company, had their domain F-Secure blocked by Configure, so they created fsecure.com with no dash to evade it. Within a week, the Configure gang updated their block list to block that domain as well. So, what was Configure's end action? What did it do? It installed a mediocre scareware program. It asked for $50. Yeah, they broke into the Smithsonian and went for the gift shop cash register. It was called Spyware Protect 2009, and it was very similar to other fake antiviruses of the time. I tried finding a sample of it to take a look at, but there is very little information about it. I did find the website from where Configure would download it, it's archived on the Wayback Machine. It's a blank website that proclaims it works. Don't know what's going on there. I found a video showing some of its functionality, all very typical stuff. Fake scans, pop-ups telling you your computer is infected, all that stuff. All that work into making Configure for this. But there was another function that was much more famous and much more lucrative. The 2000s was when email spam took off, advertising many things. Chief among them were shady gray market online pharmacies. Sending spam from one place would quickly get the entire campaign blocked by email providers, so spammers turned to botnets to send spam from many places. Botnets are simply a collective of computers that have been turned into a single zombie network, almost always used by criminals. One of these botnets was Walladak, capable of sending over a billion spam emails every day, which was only 1% of global spam at the time. Configur connected computers to the Walladak botnet and used them to send spam and make money for the gang. Walladak was shut down a year later by Microsoft when they seized the domains Walladak used to control the botnet. Configure was an advanced worm run by people who knew their stuff. Configure infected anywhere from 9 to 15 million computers and is still out there today. I've been referring to it in the past tense, but Configure is still spreading and remains a real problem for systems using Windows XP. For how much it spread and how advanced it was, Configure is seldom remembered. Viruses like Love Letter, Stuxnet, and even worms like Sasser, Slammer, and MyDoom have all left their marks and are still widely talked about. Searching for Configur online is like taking a time machine back to 2009. Some real Kino on YouTube if you search for it, by the way. What's going on over there? My name's Hall out there. 
I'm here to tell you about a new computer worm called Mr. Donadoke. There was a little bit of a media circus around it for a while, all essentially saying, well, we don't know what it does, but cybercrime is bad, okay? There was a lot of speculation about what it did, sort of reminiscent of the Michelangelo virus in 1991. There was a lot of misinformation and misunderstanding about it, like some news channels were saying it prevented users from shutting down their computer somehow. The April 1st Doomsday was commonly reported, the day the worm would finally activate its supposed catastrophic payload. I couldn't find where this was initially reported or why this caught on. The worm did have to periodically phone home for new instructions, and April 1st was theorized to be some sort of a deadline. There's some evidence that maybe April 1st was a significant date, since Configure E released a week afterward. Some people think the attention scared the Configure gang away from going through with the plan, and scared them away from using Configure for more ambitious things altogether, but that's only speculation and nobody but the group can know for sure. That group did face some consequences, I think. Either two, three, or four men were arrested, and maybe one of them got some prison time. Details are scarce, and nobody was publicly identified. Microsoft still has a quarter million dollar bounty out for information leading to the arrest of the Conficker gang, and it still sits unclaimed. Conficker is a pretty amazing worm, especially for the time it was made. It was very much a product of its time, when malware was monetized and sophisticated, but wasn't yet the ransomware scourge of today. It was a landmark piece of software, even if its direct impact was small. It wasn't Y2K 2.0, but Conficker nonetheless changed malware forever. You have reached the 651 area code test number in St. Paul, Minnesota for the Minneapolis LATA 628.